Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this session on the strategic treasurer, the changing role and perspective of a treasurer in a transforming world. We've got an excellent session for you this, this lunchtime, and I hope that you are all going to get some, some really interesting insights from our panel. I'm delighted that I'm joined this morning by Rachel Crocker from Bora Morris, uh, Bjork Hutfield from Hershey's, and uh, Ollie Houdet from Tate and Lyle, and also with from Muir Matheson from Nationwide. So what I'd like to do, because it's, I think, much easier and much nicer for you all, is ask each of the panelists to just spend a couple of minutes to introduce themselves and their background uh, so that you know something about where they're coming from on this. So should we start with you, Rachel? Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Rachel Crocker, and I head up the Brewer Morris Treasury Practice and have worked in treasury recruitment for over 13 years. My focus is on senior, permanent and executive search, where I've placed individuals from across my network into um, various organisations from very large businesses um, through to startups and SMEs across both commerce and industry and banking and financial services. Um, I've been proud to be the chosen executive search partner for some of the biggest moves in the treasury profession, and I'm very passionate about driving the diversity and equal opportunities agenda. Good. Thank you, Rachel. Um, can I pass now to you, Bjork, please? Yes, good morning, or should I say good afternoon to you guys. I'm sitting in the US, so it's still early morning around here. Uh, my name is Bjork Hopfeld. Uh, I'm from the Hershey Company, and for the folks in Europe that doesn't know what Hershey is, we produce chocolate. We are the biggest chocolate manufacturer in the United States. In the UK, I think what you will know most of that is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Uh, that, that come from our end of the world. Um, I'm the treasurer for the Hershey Company on a global scale, uh, managing uh, anything from cash to credit, the FX, dead capital markets. And under my purview, I also have the company's insurance program and pension and asset, pension asset management. And I normally say I'm the other side of the coin where the flip side is tax. We like almost like Siamese twins, if you want to put it down that way around. Uh, and before I joined Hershey, I was in the banking world for somewhere like 25 years, anywhere between Denmark, Poland, and, and the United States back and forth a few times. Uh, and uh, that's kind of my background. And uh, I'm looking forward to ask any kind of, uh, answer any kind of questions you guys might have today. Good, thank you, Bjork. Uh, can I pass now to Oli? Ah, good afternoon. Thanks, Fiona. Um, so I'm Oli Wadet. I'm group treasurer for Tate and Lyle PLC. Um, now, a little bit of breaking news probably for some people is that Tate and Lyle PLC don't actually make sugar. We are a uh, food ingredients business. Um, and actually we, we sold the sugar business about uh, 10 years ago now. So very much focused actually on producing ingredients that help uh, our customers um, take sugar, fat, calories out of products. So a bit of a, a transformation really there in terms of um, data and loss. So very relevant for our, our festival of, of treasury transformation. So I've worked uh, coming up now for 10 years uh, in treasury. I'm a qualified accountant by training and I've had a variety of um, finance roles, but switched to treasury about 10 years ago when I was at Anglo-American, the global mining company. and um, a very strategic function there, actually very critical to, to the, the uh, ongoing success of, of that company. And four years ago, I joined uh, Tate and Lyle as the head of treasurer, as head of treasury, sorry, uh, where I'm responsible for the global functions, so covering you know, FX, debt capital markets, cash management, and also support um, our strategy around group pensions. It's, I was reflecting actually in, in the run-up today how my role in Tate and Lyle is really evolved to become very strategic. So I look forward to sharing um, some of my thoughts around uh, how, that's, how that's happened on that journey over the past few years. Good, thank you, Ollie. And last and no news least at all, Muir. Thank you, Fiona. Good afternoon slash morning, everyone, uh, wherever you're joining from today. So I'm Muir Matheson. I'm the treasurer at Nationwide Building Society. Uh, for those of you who don't know Nationwide Building Society, we are a, a retail financial services provider in the UK. We're the second largest mortgage lender in the UK. We're, we're mainly focused on mortgages, savings and banking. 
uh, and um, we are unusual in that we are a mutual building society. So we don't have shareholders. We exist for and uh, only exist for and are owned by our customers. That makes it uh, a little bit different and very, very interesting. Uh, I've, um, like Bjork, I've worked in banking about 25 years now in a variety of roles, in and out of treasury, investment banking, like Oli, an, an accountant uh, back in the dim and distant days. Um, and uh, likewise, uh, really looking forward to a good conversation about um, the strategic role of Treasury. Good. Thank you, Muir. So, so you and Oli both saw the light and transferred into Treasury, as, as so many do. And uh, once, you, once you've started in Treasury, I think it's very difficult to, to, to move away or if you do move away, quite often coming back as well and as a, as a career move. So thank you all for that. So that's been a great introduction. What I failed to do at the beginning, I'm very sorry, is to just explain to everybody that this session is being recorded um, and you will be able to see it on the ACT website later. Uh, but there is also a function for Q&A. Uh, so if you are, are uh, interested and have any questions that you would like to ask, to any of the members of the panel, then please put, send them through onto the Q and A, and I will uh, address those to the relevant people on the team, on the on the panel today. So thank you for that. What we thought we would do is to start uh, maybe with you, Rachel, if you wouldn't mind. You've been involved in the Treasury recruitment field for a number of years, uh, and I think it'd be useful if you could just give us a bit of a background as to how the the, the Treasury role has evolved over the last few years. Sure, thanks Fiona. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've worked in Treasury recruitment for over 13 years and I think that over the last 13 years, the last 12 in particular, um, since 2008, I've seen a really visible change in the role of the Treasurer um, and it's really evolved and I guess where that is most visible to me is in terms of when I'm having a briefing from a CFO or a hiring manager who's looking to recruit a Treasurer, um, the things that we're prioritising and focusing on have really changed. Historically, the role of the Treasurer was, was more transactional, and that was um, due in part to a lack of automation, but also I just think there was less understanding around how the, the role of the Treasurer can really add value to an organisation. Um, then during the global financial crisis, the role of the Treasurer obviously came into very sharp focus. And we saw it was really clear that organisations who had treasurers that had been strategic and forward thinking were just far better placed to weather the storm. Um, and those organisations that had treasurers that had been more reactive um, were impacted very heavily. So CFOs and, and senior leadership saw um, the value of having a strategic treasurer, but probably more importantly, the cost of not having that strategic skill set. Um, so in the years following 2008, we were kept extremely busy um, recruiting um, treasurers and upskilling departments um, and that strategic skill set was absolutely on everybody's agenda, that ability to look forward, take a long term view and really plan for the future. So we also saw organisations that wouldn't have previously felt they had a requirement for a group treasurer look to hire their first treasury professional. So across the whole market, we were seeing a real focus on bringing that skill set into the organisation and upskilling existing teams. Um, and that has continued up until today. Um, it's been further expedited, actually, by um, the automation of many treasury processes. So treasury departments now have much more capacity for you know, analytical work and all the stuff that goes into that strategic decision making, because a lot of the more transactional stuff has been automated. So um, I mentioned earlier that I've seen a big difference in terms of the briefing that I'm given these days from a CFO when they're looking to hire a group treasurer. Um, and in the past, we used to talk an awful lot about technical capability. And um, whilst it's really important to stress that, that technical piece is critical and so important in the group treasurer role. Um, I actually tend to spend a lot more time now talking to hiring managers um, about those more strategic areas. And I think the key areas we tend to talk about are relationships, leadership and innovation. So um, the relationships piece is really important, particularly those internal stakeholder relationships. So um, I've, I seem to increasingly talk about this when we're looking for a group treasurer, 
that ability to build connections across an organization to understand what's happening in other areas of the business. Um, and that enables you to then be proactive and strategic to preempt where Treasury might be able to add value and to help drive things forward for the business, um, as well as the external relationships, which of course, you know, banking counterparty, of course, um, but also things like, you know, your own Treasury network and the ACT to ensure that you're up to date on current trends, new ideas, new, new approaches. Um, the leadership aspect of Treasury has grown a huge amount and that's actually, I feel, um, not just about managing a team and those direct reports, but leadership within the organization. So I think that, you know, strategic treasury is about having a vision for treasury and having um, a long-term view, but also being able to take others with you. And a really important part of the group treasurer role these days is being able to get buy-in from across the organization um, to take, um, you know, that strategic thinking forwards and make it a reality. Um, and just finally, innovation, which is obviously at the heart of being strategic. I think that you know, the ability to come up with, with new, fresh ideas and look at new ways of doing things. Um, it's something that I really focus on when I'm running a search for a, for a treasurer um, and, and really ask people to give me examples of times when they've come up with something new and innovative and been able to drive change. Um, so they're the key things we tend to talk about now. And I think that, you know, all those areas really show the focus shifting to that strategic treasurer. Um, and given the current climate, I would only expect the role of the strategic treasurer to be more high profile and, and more in demand. And I think we'll see an increased requirement much as we did back in 2008, um, which is brilliant because look, I'm really passionate about the role of the treasurer being a strategic one. I think that from my, I guess my, my quite unique view from the outside, I can see um, the many ways that a strategic treasurer adds a lot of value to an organization, um, but also it makes for very exciting career opportunities within treasury. So I think it's a good thing. Good. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, I think that that very much leads us on to, to talk about uh, the role the, that the treasurers play uh, in our own organisations and, and looking at with the way that the world is, is, is changing and transforming at the moment, um, how that treasury role has changed and developed and, and, and what we are able to do about that. Um, Bjork, I know in, in Hershey's you have um, you've been um, doing a lot in, re in relation to strategic planning and, and tax. Could you just give us a little bit of a flavor for how that works for you? Yeah. So again, as, as Rachel mentioned, back in the days prior to 2008 or whatever, Treasury was moving cash around, make sure there was money in the bank accounts if we pay our bills. Uh, we still have to do that, but that is a very small part of the daily job. The job is more like, as I normally look at Treasury, we're sitting like the spider in the middle of the web uh, because everybody in an organization at some point either need money or make money. And when they do that, they have to come by us. And therefore, we kind of have our tentacles out in all different kind of corners of the business. And as I alluded to in my introduction, tax is a big part of that because whenever you move cash around or you change the structure that might be the legal entity structure in the international network or even in the domestic. It's not just to say the money piece of it, there's a tax piece of it. Once you said that, you have to go and talk to the legal guys to make sure that you don't break any kind of legal rules or regulatory pieces of it. But when you're done that, you have to make sure you have the rest of the organization coming along with you, so supply chain, procurement, accounts payable, accounts receivable. There are so many kind of consistencies you constantly have to be in touch with. So as I normally say to my folks, um, we have a sales team. They are hired as sales folks. But in Treasury, we are an internal sales team. We have to constantly sell ourselves to the organization, go around and prowl around what is happening in all the corners of the shop. Because if we don't do that, we can end up reacting to things that come by us. We have to be proactive and be part of all the processes at an early stage to give good guidance. So when they find the come to treasury have to execute, we have the optimal solution for them straight away and we don't have to scramble and come up with the second best option uh, on an ongoing basis. And uh, Rachel really alluded more and more companies are looking at a group treasurer. Uh, it sounds big and, and unwieldy, but the advantage of centralizing into a group treasury is that you sit in that function and kind of have the 30,000 foot view of the organization and can 
utilize differences and let's say movements between different pieces of business and come up with a cohesive uh, one-off solution that benefits everybody or at least the consolidated result of the company. There will always be people, people and organizations feel that being shortchanged because that department got more than mine and so on, but it is a, it, it's a collective result that counts. And uh, I'll pause that. Good. Thank you very much, Bjork. That's that, uh, a very interesting perspective on how Treasury has to work with all the different parts of the business. Um, and, and as you say, Treasury is having an internal sales role. Um, and in many ways, I think Treasury is a service function to a lot of the, the businesses and has been perceived as a service function. But I think now treasurers are beginning to be able to, to really demonstrate some of that value add that they can actually deliver to their organizations. Um, Ollie, I know that at Tate and Lyle, you've been doing uh, a lot uh, there, but and, and I wonder if you could give me some of, share with us some of the changes that you have seen and that you are building on with the current climate uh, in your organization. Yes, of course. So just, um, I mean, just really expanding on some of the points that Rachel and, and Bjorg made, actually, if I just, just go back, when I, I, I talked about earlier when I was at Anglo-American, that was by necessity a very strategic um, treasury operation because of the significant CapEx commitments we had. And during my time there, we went through two cycles, really, of real drop-off in commodity prices, so significant reduction in cash flow. Um, and so really, really sort of strategic issues to deal with around levels of leverage, um, cash flow, um, levels of liquidity. And, and I, I, you know, just before I finished at, at, at Tate and Lyle, I found actually myself on the, uh, sorry, at, at Anglo-American, found myself on the phone with equity investors as much as I was with debt investors explaining the balance sheet story and how, you know, that was, um, you know, our liquidity was underpinning the company and that gave a lot of confidence to the equity market. So when I, when I fast forwarded then to Tate and Lyle four, four years ago, again, a very strong function, very technically strong function, but perhaps one that I would say was more in the traditional model that Bjork referred to of, of in-house experts that the business would come to um, if they had a question or a problem or thought maybe they needed to um, consult Treasury. And I, I always found actually they've got, a, they've got a great service, but for me it was a, a potentially a missed opportunity because I'd had experience of the value that the Treasury skill set could bring to the organization. So a few a few things there that, that I think helped me along the journey to, to transition us to a more strategic function. The first thing I did actually was to meet with several of our executive committee members. Um, traditionally, I think we'd operated through finance, um, which is great, building a strong network through your finance peers, but actually pushing yourself a little bit outside of the comfort zone to meet people who are you know, running the business and the president of our, of our divisions and just you know in, over a coffee in, in a friendly way saying, look, hi, I'm, I'm the new guy in Treasury, not sure if you know what we do, but this is what we do, and I'd love to hear about any um, business challenges you're having and how I, I might support that. And having moved from a position of, well, they'll be too busy to speak to me about a niche area of Treasury, actually, I think people love it. If you come to them and say, look, I'm here, I'd love, if you've got any problems, I'd love to help solve it. Um, and they were fabulous conversations and really gave me some great pointers for where there was a bit of a space that Treasury and, and the skill set we brought could step into. So from there, we developed a, a, a clear vision, which was you know, really rooted around a lot of the core things that, that Bjork referred to, you know, around actually that's your, your license to play really is around strong controls, strong cash management, protecting the business. But that's a platform from which to go and do some more exciting, interesting, ex expansive things around business partnering. Um, and really supporting business growth. So that was a really, that really gave me the, the, the strong kickstart. And then just a couple of examples where, where that's developed is, you know, one of the things we do in Treasury is, is, is often we are uh, on the receiving end of, of cash flows, so the business can generate cash and that has impacts for our funding approach, how much do we need to raise in markets, what do we do with the excess cash. But that for me, we, we went on a journey from that, from, from actually just being on, on perhaps the receiving end of the cash flow into actually uh, 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 being inquisitive to understand, well, what's actually, what are some of the things that, that drive the cash flow? Um, and once you've built up that understanding, I've increasingly found myself actually then, well, looking at, okay, well, what are the some of the levers we can pull 
to drive cash flow performance. Um, and then I found myself in conversations with, um, you know, our commercial teams around customer payment um, use of supply chain finance. Um, you know, working capital initiatives on on our own supplier payment terms. You know, what should we do around inventory financing? So, so these these come from, from a very small start. Actually, you can find that these these conversations really expand, and before you know it, you know, in in the recent crisis um, with the pandemic, you know, I find myself drafting the board papers around, you know, cash flow generation, some of the things that will influence it up or down, how we feel about the scenario analysis, what's our central case. And therefore, what does it mean for balance sheet, liquidity, even dividend policy was, was something that we were driving from, from Treasury. So, you know, really, you know, putting in the foundations over the past few years meant I was really well placed to, um, to support at a, at a time when actually the a strategic thinking in Treasury was of absolute critical importance. The, the last thing I, I wanted to just mention actually was thinking through what the strategy of the company is, coming at it the other way and thinking, well, how can Treasury contribute towards that? And something we've been doing a lot of thinking on in Tate and Lyle is around the, the purpose of the company. And um, you know, we, we've, we, we talk about that in terms of improving lives for generations. And it, and, it, and it comes to the point I made earlier around helping people have healthier diets, but also you know, looking after the well-being of our employees. And, and actually, you just thought, well, Treasury, quite a niche area. How can you possibly contribute to purpose? That's going to be more for the ESG teams, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, but we looked at it and thought, well, one of the evolving areas in Treasury now around purpose or ESG is by having a sustainability link in the revolving credit facility. So that is something that we did, we put in place recently when we, we extended our facility. So we've, we've now linked the pricing of our facility to performance against CO2 emissions um, and waste to landfill and water usage. And what's very interesting for me there is this wasn't just a, a kind of box ticking exercise. Okay, it's now linked to our um, targets, the price of the facility. Actually, it drove a really good conversation internally around, okay, well, what are really good, acceptable milestones um, that, that stand up to scrutiny from third parties, you know, the, the banks? And, and actually, it drove a bit of a a healthy tension and I was really it's very interesting actually how you know we found ourselves again quite at the forefront really of discussions around milestones around on these um, um, social and environmental targets which is perhaps not a traditional area that you might think a treasurer might play so look, a really exciting journey for treasurers to your point Fiona I think it's a fabulous and exciting area to, to work at the moment plenty more to come I think I think you're absolutely right there, Ollie, and it looks it sounds to me as if you know you're going to be looking at doing a green bond as well in the next <laughs> for building on <laughs> and, and developing on your green credentials, uh, uh, and that sounds really exciting. So thank you for that. I'd like to to change things slightly now uh, and ask Muir to tell us something about the work that he's doing at, at Nationwide, because I think um, the, there are some very different issues that you face in a financial institution because you have the added impact of regulation. Um, but Muir, I'd like you to, if you wouldn't mind, just giving us a little bit of a, uh, a flavour for what the, your, how your role plays out at Nationwide. Yeah, of course, Fiona. Um, and even though there are differences, so much of what um, Rachel, York and Holly have said are very, very similar mm. um, to, to even a heavily regulated bank or building society. Um, so I, I will I'm no doubt pick up on some of those themes again. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with with um, what, what's already been said around the treasurer and the treasury uh, being at the heart of things. I do very much see, see um, treasury being at the heart of things. And that gives you great opportunity, as Bjork has said, as, as Rachel said, to join the dots, seeing what's really going on across the organisation. I guess taking a step back in terms of um, what what do I think the fundamental role of the treasurer is? I think the treasurer there absolutely is there to provide services to the rest of the business, and we have a huge responsibility to provide those services. But we also have a huge responsibility to protect the business. I think ultimately the treasurer, certainly in a financial services and, and banking context, the treasurer is there as the prudential guardian of the business and the balance sheet. Uh, and that gives you, um, often uh, gives you permission 
to insert yourselves into decision making and uh, de decisions um, uh, where where you may not have been invited. Uh, so as well as uh, being a, that internal salesperson, uh, I think another important aspect is um, being that conscience of the organization, that financial conscience of the organization and holding the organization to account to not do daft things and uh, make sure that um, you're not fundamentally undermining the, the balance sheet in the business. Um, so that, that for me makes it a really, really interesting role. Um, like I say, because you, because you sit at the heart of things, money flows in and out of treasury, uh, you can um, absolutely join the dots across the business. And I think um, that uh, having the technical knowledge and skills that the treasury people tend to have, um, along with that uh, complete view across the organization does give you that opportunity to uh, really connect the dots and, and add value that way. Um, we also sit in a privileged position in terms of uh, we're quite an externally facing function as well. Um, so we, we're all the time um, looking at financial markets, understanding what's going on. We're part economist, part financial markets practitioner, part balance sheet managers and, and so on. Um, and that external insight is often really helpful for an organisation. And most organisations do tend to be somewhat inward looking. Um, and so I, I often find that uh, treasury people can really add value to an organization by taking that external insights and um, giving that outside in view to the rest of the organization. Uh, and that, that's something that we, we certainly um, tend to try and do. Um, in terms of how things have evolved here at Nationwide and, and as I see it across the industry, I think Rachel touched on some of these themes earlier. Um, automation and technology is definitely a, a key part. We're all trying to be more efficient um, because that's in the interests of our businesses and our owners ultimately. Um, so the more you can automate uh, repeatable processes, whether that's um, reporting or your risk management or whatever it is that you can do, the, the better. And technology has come a long, long way and continues to develop in that regard. Uh, and then, as Rachel said earlier, you can then reinvest some of that time really in insight and value add and uh, longer term strategic views and thinking. Uh, I think treasurers are well placed to think not just about one version of the future world. We're all, all crystal ball gazers, but certainly in a time like we find ourselves now, there are many possible paths of the future from here. Um, and treasurers, in, in my experience, tend to be good at uh, putting their black hats on and thinking, well, what if things don't turn out as good as our central forecast and our central view? How bad will that be for us? What mitigating actions can we take? Is there anything we need to do today in order to um, protect against what, what might be plausible downsides? Um, so that's that's where treasurers can really help. Um, but, but for me, the, the magic ingredient to a really successful treasury that is doing all of those things, being the guardian of the balance sheet, adding lots of value is about the people. It's absolutely about treasury people and treasury skill sets. Uh, and my one advice to any treasurer is invest in your people. Um, it'll be the best return on investment you get. Uh, you want people who are curious, who are um, bought into the, the purpose, as Ollie was talking about, the purpose of the organization, who understand the bigger picture, who are prepared to join the dots. Um, who um, do undertake professional development, whether that's with ACT or Halmer in, in the banking uh, industry or elsewhere, um, and, um, and are, are really um, motivated to add that value to the organization uh, and, and keep the organization healthy for the longer term. Good. Thank you, Muir. That That's a really interesting perspective on there. And actually, that that takes me straight into uh, one of the very, an interesting question that has come through on the Q&A. Um, and I'm going to, to, if I may, direct this one initially to you, Rachel, but the others I'm sure will, will each come up with their own perspective. The question is, what skills separate a genuine strategic treasurer from one who plans, who just plans well? Rachel, can I ask you to look at that Ooh. one first? Good question. Um, I think it's. I, I think it probably ties into some of the things I mentioned earlier, and I think that 
the two key things are innovation. So it has to be, I think you have to be innovative and creative and not just plan for the future, but think about, um, as Mia mentioned, different potential scenarios um, and, and new fresh ways of doing things. Um, and then I think it's that relationships piece. I think that um, to plan is, is great and is part of being strategic. Um, but then to be a truly strategic treasurer, I think it's that piece where you then take the organisation with you, you get stakeholders bought into the plan um, and then get everybody bought into the vision and, and really take that forward. And that's where I think you become truly strategic. So I think it's a mixture of those two elements. But good question, tricky. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm going, to, I'm going to see whether I can get some alternative views, your, your thoughts very much on the innovation side. Uh, Bjorn, anything you would add in terms of skills for a genuine strategic treasurer? Yes, yeah, so, so, so the way I look at it, um, on the planning side, yes, all corporates, we plan and we plan and we plan, but you also have to be ready to say at the end of all the plan, everything else being equal. And if something changes, you have to be ready to throw the whole thing out and start all over again, because if I could foresee the future with any kind of certainty, I would like to not be sitting in this panel here today. I'll be sitting somewhere in the Caribbean and enjoy my unspoken fortunes, right? So I think strategic comes down to, and it comes back to, let's say, the, the treasurer or the treasury's role, uh, whether it's an interesting role or not. And you can make it as interesting as you want to do. The more you reach out to the organization, the more you know about all the moving pieces, the better you can add value by helping them in their planning. Because I can plan to my heart's content in treasury, but if the rest of the organization doesn't know what I'm doing, we're probably gonna run in opposite directions. And again, it comes down to also as a treasurer, I think you have to be willing to say, I'm willing to go outside my comfort zone. So as an example, we have a geographic location, I can't tell about it because it's not out yet, where we have three legal entities. And there might be a common sense of putting all the three legal entities together into one. And they've had a hard time in finance to find somebody who will lead that operation. So I was asked if I would undertake that role of coordinate that whole exercise, which will involve IS, legal, HR, and whatever other, let's say, part of the company you can think of. And I said, absolutely, because it's not a normal standard treasury or let's say role to do that. But at the same time, from where I'm sitting, from my vantage point on knowing, let's say the holistic picture of the company, I feel I can add value to the project. So again, step outside your comfort zone. Don't be shy, constantly knock on doors. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you have a hard time arguing how you're adding value because you have to be ahead of the curve. As you said before, Treasury is a service organization. We're not a profit center, at least not in Hershey. We don't have an internal bank set up. So we're a cost center. So I have to justify every year the cost I rake up by adding value around the organization. And I can only do that by being proactive. I cannot sit and wait for things to happen. So stick your head out and get yourself involved in project where say, hmm, this might become a little bit sticky down the line, but it's from those things we really learn how you get to the next point. Excellent. So your 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 thoughts there uh, very much along the lines of maybe having to step outside your comfort zone, take a little bit of a risk to be able to 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 put your hand up and say, yeah, I'll do that project. It may not be primarily what I'm here for, but it's important for the organisation. It gets treasury known within the organisation and yeah. gets a lot of a, a lot of added value to the business. Because right. as treasurer, you normally have a view on how you think this should be done. Now I can actually influence it from the top down instead I have to sit a moment and groan and say, guys, I didn't like what you guys did. Okay, uh, it, it comes with pros and cons, right? Yeah, great. <laughs> I like that concept. Ollie, uh, pass these across to you. And, okay. Uh, any yeah, I mean, any uh, skills? Sorry. Skills that, se that separate a genuine strategic treasurer. Rachel and Bjork have put it beautifully, actually. The, 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 just the emphasis I would put on would, would about being inquisitive, which is really a point the others, the others have made. But but to see yourself as a leader in the business as a whole, rather than in a in a in a niche a niche finance function, and I think that gives you a license to go across the business and and ask questions and just just be inquisitive. You know, find out about the business because you never know once you start picking at 
as something you'll probably find something interesting in an area where you you can add value and, and linked to that i think is don't be afraid of um being asked questions that you don't necessarily know the answer to because i think sometimes we can be afraid well if i'm venturing out of my core skill set area i might get asked a question and i don't necessarily know know the answer and that's that's a couple of things i think you know having come from you know a non-finance background into treasury i'm just kind of used to it i often don't know the answer to the most questions um, <laughs> it feels a bit weird to admit that here but uh, you know i i think just being as, as built to be, be willing to be outside of your comfort zone and, and there's always an ability to um take problems away reflect on it discuss with your team discuss with actually non-treasury people you know we're all we're all uh, wanting to brainstorm the issues themselves or again it's one of the great things about is treasury is the community we have and uh, you know being able to reach out to other treasurers uh, attend fantastic forums like this and just to hear other perspectives in my career i found it to be um very useful and often give me a few pointers in fact, i've written a couple of things down today already <laughs> excellent ollie glad to hear it and uh Muir, i know in the in the building society world the, there's tremendous communication between different building societies far more than than i have experienced as a consultant across any other um different industry grouping um so, so I'm sure that's something you're, that you uh, are very familiar with. Just wondering whether from a, you're looking at things from a financial sector perspective, uh, are there any other skills that you think uh, specifically separate a genuine strategic treasurer? Um, it's difficult to, to build on everything that's been uh, said before, because I, I think all, all, of the, all of the points made so far are excellent and, and would be the top ones that I'd choose. Um, but but just to add a little bit, yeah, as you say, Fiona, external insights, being able to um, have one foot outside the organisation with your external contacts, whether that be uh, the treasurers, your, your banking contacts, um, your investors, um, in our case, regulators, rating agencies and so on, um, you can really provide that uh, um, using your um, both, both rights as the, the guardian of the balance sheet and and your skills as salesperson to uh, be at, at the table for for really critical decisions and uh, applying your um, treasury and financial lens to to help the organisation make smart decisions. I think that's that's so important. The only other one I'd add, Fiona, is um, never waste a good crisis. Uh, and <laughs> We certainly saw it in 2008. I think I'm quoting Barack Obama there. I'm afraid I can't, I can't claim that one as my own. But as Barack Obama says, never waste a good crisis. Um, and at the moment, we are in unprecedented times. We are in the biggest global recession for 300 years. And it's, a, it's an awful human tragedy. Um, and and um, great to see that some, some progress is being made with, with tackling the virus, um, but did have the potential to become a real uh, financial crisis. And um, I, I've, I've certainly found, and I'm sure we've all found, that treasurers have been front and centre of the business in terms of navigating through these uncertain times, helping our businesses be resilient and future-proofed in these unprecedented times. Um, I've certainly been joining our executive committee on a daily basis, as Ollie was saying earlier, joining, joining the board frequently um, because they, they want that external insight and they want the reassurance that somebody's got a steady hand on the tiller of um, the financial prospects and, and the resi resilience of the balance sheets. Um, and it's really the treasurer that, that joins all of those bits together and, and um, can, can play that role. So. Um, do never waste a good crisis and um, use those use those opportunities to tell the treasury story internally because uh, it's at times like these where um, executives and non-executives will really listen and um, then when when you've got cases for investment in the future or people you want to give opportunities to and so on they will remember the value that that treasury brings um, especially in more challenging times. Excellent, Muir. Thank you. That's that's a, a really interesting perspective. And you mentioned there the non-execs uh, as well as the executives. And and I'm just looking at the next question. One of one of the other questions has just come through, uh, and, and it's something I I dear to my heart within the ACT, and I've been looking at for a long time. Why is it so hard to explain what a treasurer is and does? And I think that's a, a very interesting question. And I've thought about it a lot in terms of particularly for non-execs. 
uh, not necessarily, I mean, in a financial organization, most of them really understand a little bit about it, but in a non-financial organization. So what, why is it so hard to explain what a treasurer is and does? Ollie, can I ask you if you wouldn't mind answering that one? Well, that in itself is a really tough question to ask. So Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to give you easy ones. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't reflected on it before. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's because two two things came to mind initially as I as I heard the the the, the question, and, and may, maybe it's firstly because perhaps we don't go and tell people enough what we do, and perhaps actually we are quite a a mis misunderstood function we haven't you know historically been great at perhaps selling ourselves internally you know as because our, our, our role has really evolved to become strategic as we, as we hope to, um, at, at the beginning um rather than something that's always been that way i, I think the other thing is it, it's very it's very far reaching i think we do a lot of different things and and i reflect back on my um my career change you know when i was initially offered the role in treasury I'll, I'll be honest it's not something i wanted to do i saw it as a very niche very highly specialized area that that actually was internally focused and and and, and you know it didn't appear to me to be that that interesting or certainly somewhere where you could build a career but having stepped into it i'm exactly where you are fiona that i feel like you know i never really want to have a a role that doesn't involve treasury and being being quite close to treasury because i love what it brings in terms of you know we've talked a lot about the strategic angles today but the you know the analytical skills the relationship building all those different elements together are fascinating so you know, I, I think it's probably because it is so broad and and influences so many areas and it goes from being highly strategic to being actually in some instances you know very very technical and i think it's it's probably difficult to um to articulate it, its breadth right Good, thank you. Rachel, I wonder if I can pass this on to you as well, because uh, you, know, you obviously are, are looking at some of, as you say, some very strategic uh, treasury roles that you've been recruiting for. Um, mm. and, and you'll have to help to sell that within the organisations that you're recruiting into. Um, why mm. do you think it is so hard to explain what a treasurer is and does? I think I think Holly's right. I think that you know you've got the, the the two elements that Treasury is very niche, but also so broad. I mean, Treasury has tentacles that run through the entire business, um, and so I think that in order to explain what Treasury really is, you have to bring it to life. You have to make it tangible, um, which actually is quite easy to do. So um, I think it's about. Um, breaking the role down i don't I, I don't think it's easy to explain treasury in the whole because it's so broad but i think if you if you target it towards your audience and bring it alive and talk about um the real world impact that treasury has i think it becomes quite actually quite simple for people to understand um and easy for them to see the value add that treasury has um i think you just have to break it down though because as ollie said it's so vast good thank you rachel Got another very interesting question here, uh, and I'm just to give you a, a little advance warning, Bjorn, Bjork, I'm going to ask you this one first. The question is, what's most important to being strategic? Is it technology skills, people skills, leadership, communication, or other, or all? <laughs> I think the simple answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think you can single any of them out. Uh, everybody talks technology and but, you know, I know how to operate my, my laptop and I can probably find out how to use our treasury workstation. But other than that, I, I kind of gave up. So technology, of course, is important, but I leave that to the IT folks. I tell them what I need in order to solve for what I'm sitting in the middle of. And then we can work with them to come up with a technology solution. I have no intention of becoming a computer, a computer geek that understand how the whole thing acts together because that brings me nowhere. The specialist to take care of that. I think it's much more, uh, as I talked about before, and, and other panelists, we have to sell treasury. We have to be people leaders. It's relationship building, both inside and outside, so we can tie, let's say, the connection between our banking world and meeting up uh, together with the procurement, meet the vendors and customers from time to time to feel, uh, get a feel for what is that, where, where, what, what is that life really circling around because I could sit in church and say, guys, when I say 90 days, it means 90 days come hell or high water. But once you sit together with a customer or a vendor, you might take a different approach on that. And from time to time, 
you have to be flexible. It's, it's all a relationship game. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, so uh, I, I, I kind of want to leave it there. Yeah, thank you. And I think that's a really interesting perspective Bjorg, that you brought in. You've, all, you've reminded us that Treasury is not just internal and external to our banks, but you've mentioned customers, suppliers, and all the other elements of the business. Uh, that Treasury gets to gets involved with, and, and as you Absolutely. say, you know, you've said ninety days, but you, if you really listen to your customer who says, well, look, on the other hand, on the other side, I'm I'm having to work with one hundred and twenty days. Maybe you can come mm -hmm. up with something that that can actually work better for the business and, and a more element, greater element in there. Um, but Muir, I wonder if I can pass that question through to you uh, about what you consider is most important to being a strategic treasurer. Yeah, so I'm going to get the easy answer as, as well, the same as Bjork, it's all, all of the above. Um, I mean, just to touch on technology for a second, because um, I'm quite old school as well. I do think um, judgment, relationships, experience, um, uh, these things are, are um, the most important things. Um, but technology is, is a great enabler. Um, we've been lucky enough to implement a end-to-end -end treasury management system over the last few years um, that has been really um, changed everything um, in terms of uh, the, the breadth of what we can do, the speed of what we can do. Uh, we're doing some really cool stuff at the moment with big data analytics. Um, and um, when you have you know, very high uh, frequency customer interactions, as you do when you've got a personal current account, for example, um, then analyzing those data sets in, in, in a way that um, can give you insights into customer behavior. I mean, these, these are marginal gains, but they can, can give you an edge. And, um, and I think this is becoming increasingly important for Treasury uh, and for treasurers and um, almost uh, table stakes now, I think, in, in the financial services industry, certainly. Um, so, so um, they are they are important things and and uh, need to be part of your portfolio of skill sets. Again, I'm not a deep technologist, not by any stretch of the imagination, and and I doubt I will ever be. But having a good enough understanding and being able to go in and ask the questions of, of the people in my team who are, um, and just giving them the opportunity to um, explore explore that stuff, I think is is um, really important and um, really helpful. But um, Ultimately, um, judgment, relationships, experience, um, being critically minded around the downsides and the potential downsides of the future, um, but uh, also yeah, being um, somebody wants to put it to me that you need to be um, the biggest critic of your organization inside your organization, but the biggest salesperson of your organization outside your organization. And uh, I think that's a, a nice way of summarizing it, treasurers. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good summary. Thank you. Um, but interestingly, um, you, you, were, you were saying we treasurers, to be a strategic treasurer, you have to make sure that the technology, the base technology that you're operating is there behind you to support you so that you've got the information you can do you that you need to be able to do the analysis and come up with ideas and, and, and ways to support the business. So, so thank you. Um, Oli, I'm going to just quickly ask you, if I if I may, um, it's it's an interesting question as to why um, why the uh, what what is so hard to explain about a treasurer? Because you you look you came into treasury thinking it was a niche function uh, and you weren't sure whether you whether you wanted it. Um, how would you think it would have helped you to to make the decision to come into treasury? if you'd known a little bit more about it before you started? Yeah, I, I think um, that, that's a really, really good question. I, I think in, increasingly, one of the things I do actually at Tate & Law now is, is share a bit about what we do in Treasury. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with, with, with the, the uh, you know, increasing use of, of social media, you know, even, even within corporates now. I mean, I, go, I, go, I was reflecting on this the other day, actually. I remember, you know, 10 years ago, we... Um, you know, like all uh, when I was at my last company, all social media was turned off internally. You know, it was felt as if it was a, a distraction from doing the job, and so it was all disabled as a kind of 
thing not to go near. And, and now actually it's it's hugely it takes not hugely yeah. promoted and we're encouraged to use it. So one of the one of the things I do actually is share quite a lot about what we do in Treasury, you know, some of the, the thinking we're doing, the point around relationship management, um, but also sharing the 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 work we've done around um, ESG and purpose and and the environmental link in the in the revolving credit facility. Actually helping just to get that message out in in small ways to help people around the business understand okay so this is this is what the function does i can see some tangible examples of where the the function are getting involved and actually actually that's quite interesting um and a point we've touched on as well is which is a real uh, development i've had actually over the past few years is is um seeing yourself as a, a leader in the wider organization so beyond traditional treasury areas means being more visible means walking around and talking to to different people um and you know explaining what you're working on at the moment what they're working on and, and how there might be some interactions for me having had sort of greater visibility around the business of what just seeing some of the examples of what treasury were working on i think would have been a real um a real a real benefit to help to help make that decision but uh, as, I, as i said earlier i think once you've tried it it's um uh, it's quite addictive. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bjork, I'm going to, to, this is a very interesting one, the, the question that's come through is, I'm going to address this to you. What will Treasury look like in, say, five to ten years' time? And where will we be seeing the most radical changes? Uh, and the suggestions here have been payment systems, technology, people and people skills that are required, culture, ways of working and interacting, uh, and funding interest, instruments and markets. Well, there's a huge range there, but what do you think uh, Bjork Treasury will look like in say five to 10 years time? I'm gonna have to buy a lot of Windex to get my crystal ball clear there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I think that's a very good question. And I think they very much depend on the organization you're working for. Because again, to the question before, why it's so hard to understand what Treasury is? Because I don't think the two organization that structure the treasury department the same way around. Uh, they, they all have different kind of responsibilities, different, let's say, seniority level the organization and so on. But if, if I talk, let's say, from a Hershey perspective, I think it will become a more a more integrated piece of the business on, on a grand holistic scale and, and not just being, let's say, an organization sitting there as a blur on the outside and, and make sure they're just a bank account. Because going back to technology, all the stuff about the transactionals and managing bank account reconciliation and short-term financing and so on. You have computer programs to do that and five, 10 years down the line, that's all gonna be automated from one end to another. I don't need to say junior treasury employees to do that. So I think treasury will be much more populated by people that are more senior and level, able to take decision on a strategic level and take ownership and go with it and, and go up to, let's say, on an ongoing basis, report to the president on, on, on international and the CFO and to the board uh, committees and so on on an ongoing basis and be a much more proactive piece of the organization instead of the old school treasurer where you just sat and funded the business. The funding piece can take care of itself. Uh, so it's more like what I said before, you, you, you get much more into the weeds of the structure of the business, what kind of m a should we do, how we're going to do that. So, so, so really the big lines that where, where, the, where the big numbers are flying around, I think that's where we're going to land ultimately as a treasury function. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I noticed we've only got about another five or six minutes. So I just uh, a very interesting last question, I think, and I'm going to start with you, um, Rachel. What has helped you become more strategic? a book, a person, an observation? I think the, the people in my network who have become more strategic, I think um, it tends to be through experience. And I think that, um, you know, tying in with something Bork mentioned earlier, I think that piece around sticking your hand up for projects and getting exposure 
um, is the key. I think you have to have seen real world examples to be able to be strategic um, and to have ideas because you have to have an understanding of what works and what doesn't. Um, it's very difficult. You can get the theory from study, um, but it's very difficult to have that real depth of understanding to be confident enough to make a decision to change how an organization fundamentally does something. Um, and that's what we're talking about here with, with strategy, I think. So I think it has to be experience. And, you know, for, for people coming up through the treasury profession, my advice to them around, you know, becoming more strategic, it's got to be that piece around putting your hand up for projects, getting involved in things that may not be pure treasury, that get you out into the business, but that give you the opportunity to see um, all different aspects of treasury, um, because that then gives you the confidence and, and the experience to be able to be truly strategic in the future. Good, thank you. I'm going to ask the same question to all of you. So Muir, I'm going to ask you uh, now, if you wouldn't mind giving your thoughts. Rachel has just said, uh, that it's very much about experience and, and getting a range of different and looking at things from a different perspective. What would you say, uh, what has helped you to become more strategic? Yeah, so um, tying a few things together that we've spoken about over the last hour, really. Um, be curious, be brave. Then as, as Rachel says, stick your hand up for things. Um, in times of adversity, remember that you are learning the most. So I, I know a lot of treasurers who say the financial crisis was really the making of them. Um, and similarly now, as we are in a real economic um, downturn globally, use this opportunity to learn, throw yourself into it and, and you will um, definitely um, learn uh, significant amounts. Um, but do, do always be curious, uh, think about the purpose of your organization as, as Ollie mentioned earlier, Think about the think commercially. Do think commercially, and that's um, as Bjork said earlier, is about relationships, is about understanding your customer and your business, um, and uh, joining all of those things together is how I how it's worked out for me, and, and would be my advice to any aspiring group treasurer out there. Good, thank you, Muir. So, so Wally, do, passing it on to that and on to you. What has helped you to become more strategic? I mean, Muir and Rachel have, have given some great points there. Just one I'll add, actually, is, is um, you know, don't be afraid of just doing several small experiments. So it's going to be very difficult. You know, if, if, you're, not, if you're not in the boardroom at the moment, it's quite difficult to just go and knock on the door and, and interrupt the next board meeting. So, you know, I, I, for me, it's just a series of small experiments, actually testing the boundaries and actually thinking, OK, you know, can I be invited into this conversation or can I invite myself in and just seeing how it goes don't you know don't feel coming off the bat oh, I need to be massively more strategic I think it it comes as Rachel said through experience and actually just being inquisitive and just 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 trying it out lots of small experiments good thank you Ollie and and, and I'll leave uh, Bjork I'll ask, leave you with the last one on last uh, word on this as to to what you think has helped you to become more strategic so let me try that one again being inquisitive, almost to the point of being like a traveling sales guy, get the foot in the door and never accept no as an answer. Keep on pushing and pushing. And more importantly, don't ever be afraid of taking ownership of what you promote. Because if you don't take ownership, you're not gonna get the respect. That's a, a very interesting one there. Thank you to taking ownership. So thank you. What I'd like to do now, I'm afraid we're, we're, we're out of time. We've just got a, another minute I just take to, to round up. and. Uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank all my uh, speakers. You've really raised a whole range of different aspects and ideas on how we can all actually help our treasury functions to continue that strategic development uh, in, in a very difficult changing world that we're in at the, at, at the moment. Um, and I would also like to thank our audience and thank you for your questions. There's been some really interesting questions that have come through on the Q&A section. Um, I'd like to remind uh, our delegates to please fill in the feedback survey. We find that really helpful in the ACT because it really helps us to organise uh, the next sessions to, to be able to meet the things that you are of most interest to you. Um, I'd like to remind you all that you can continue the discussion at the virtual discussion forum and you'll be able to see that on the ACT website. Um, please don't forget to, to look 
and click through the agenda for all the pre-recorded sessions that have been a whole series of pre-recorded sessions that you can get and that you can are able to watch at any time and you can watch now. Um, and just to let you to, to remind you that we've got one more live session today uh, and that will be on treasury talent in a world of accelerated transformation. So I'm sure you will find that one very interesting. So thank you to all my speakers. Thank you to the delegates. And I wish you all a very good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for